Right, the bell, number so nine, researching with Mar. Now, for those who don't know, Mar is my wife to be. She's an amazing person. When she's new to this conscious community and she has some questions, and what we're going to be doing is researching all of the questions that she has, get into depth with these questions. She's nervous, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. We probably won't even get any views. Oh, that's okay. That's better. No, I'm joking. That's not better. Yeah. <laughs> so we was talking about the Holocaust. Um, let's get into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically hopefully by the springtime, I'll have answers as to what my true, you know, ethnicity, and my true race, what it really is. So we were talking about that. I know that I'm great part German. So we were discussing the Holocaust and how I'm, I'm not intrigued because it was a tragedy, uh, but I'm intrigued just to know more about it. And um, yeah, I just had, Questions about Adolf Hitler and all that. Well, <laughs> Adolf Hitler. <laughs> man, that dude, man, supposedly he was he was said to um, he was said to be paid off. Um, he was sent to be paid he off. He was said to be paid off. Paid off. And was, um, he was like uh, targeted by the elite too carry out their agenda. Uh, that's basically what is it? I'm on I'm actually on looking up some stuff right now. So we're gonna do some research. Research, 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 research. People still think Holocaust was a hoax. Look at all this stuff. Well you said something about that and that's mainly what really got these. me curious about the Holocaust was you said something yeah. of the like that it didn't that it, See, did have you said? Right here. Well, I was talking about the Zionist Jews. Oh. Can you can you elaborate on this, James? People still think the Holocaust was a hoax. Right. Was it a hoax? That's did, what we're researching oh, right that's now. That's what we're looking at. All right. I just expect you to have. It says one day you expect me to know where I I'm just at. expect you to have all the answers. <laughs> no, you do I'm telling you, I did this research before. I'm just trying to show you. This is the stuff that's being talked about. Let's Yeah, you're saying boo, but I'm, I'm trying to say. <laughs> I say like, boo because I personally. I'll put a video on. I personally it. rather you read me some facts and you. I'm have trying to show you. Read. I don't want to show. Read. I, I want you to read it, it to me. All right, all right, and I want you it. to answer my questions, right. and I want other people to answer my questions. I personally don't want to sit and look on like Google. You right here, people. One, one, only one third of the world believes six million Jews died in the Holocaust. The Holocaust started because of Zionist Jews in the NWO, New World Order, said another. So why do so many people deny that the Nazi systematically killed six million Jews? Did I, did I just say that? Or did I not just say that when we was talking off off air? I just. But I'm just saying, like, it's it's this is what's being taught. I'm just, I'm not lying. Like I'm I'm not making it up. Like this is the type of stuff people are talking about. You know? I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? But this is the type of stuff that people are talking about. <laughs> You're definitely believing this. This is no way is this staying up. It's going to stay up. All right, so. No, no. We're going to look up some more stuff on the live on, on um, Adolf Hitler. Let's 
Say to viewers, good. <laughs> 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 people are listening. Listen, this isn't a good show. We need to get it better. Answer. <laughs> well, you got, you, you know, oh, we got a sniper, everybody. We got a sniper in a fucking real life shit. What are we going to do? I'm just saying, like. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't. You just, you just, you just got to relax. This is. You can stream for a long time. It's got up eight hours worth of footage. We're all right. All right, so let's just look up some videos and stuff. I don't know if I like the Holocaust topic. Okay, so let's switch up the topic. We don't want to talk about Holocaust anymore. Well, get that everybody. book I just bought today for a dog. Can you grab this one? Just roll right over there. Grab that quick. All right, people. No, because you said something about don't put a filter oh. on the water. And I'd like to understand right. more about well, I'm saying Sarah Gilbert, everybody. Let's. let's well, camera. this is the girl from um, yeah. Roseanne, Dar Darlene, I believe her name. I didn't watch. This girl right movie. here. She's got a book. Sarah Gilbert. It Sarah was a dollar, Gilbert. dollar general. It was a dollar. See, price, one book. All right, they see it. But what matters <laughs> most is what's inside. Yes, she's got a lot of good information in here. But she's talking about um, putting a filter on your water or whatever. What, well, what was no, it? That was just one part of it. Yeah, it's but a screw that. Don't even drink it at all. It's don't don't what yeah well well that's what we were talking about was one aspect of something you were saying was about the filter but in in summary her book is a practical guide to clearing your body detoxing your home and saving the earth like without losing your mind and being like too old with it but it's called the imperfect and in, inventor in, 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 environmentalist mm -hmm. <laughs> and um yeah just goes through different topics and whatnot one was a filter water filter mm -hmm. and not to drink the tap and she gave a website you could put like your zip code in and find out like what type of chemicals may be flowing through your water or something like that but this is the part i'm on right now is about um i guess a study done in china mm -hmm. it's a long-term project in rural china found that a dairy free of oh excuse me a diet free of dairy uh can dramatically reduce risks of like cancer diabetes and all that stuff basically you know dairy isn't the best for our bodies and we grew up with those uh you know milk those mustache, values, yeah oh yep, yep milk helps build strong bones but in, in actuality we're learning now that milk isn't necessarily meant for us to be drinking. I'm sure it's, it's all right if you drink one glass or whatever, but it's not something we should religiously be drinking. It's meant for baby cows. Yeah. Just like my breast milk is meant for my daughter, and it's, you know. Yeah. I, I think if, you know, kind of follows that. Are we meant to be drinking cow's milk? And I know everyone's entitled to their opinion and whatnot, but we in this household have drastically cut out, you know, dairy and, and you know our meat intake has went down, has gone down as well. I mean, we indulge every now and again on you know some chicken fingers. Not gonna lie, but for the most <laughs> part, we try to you know we're trying to practice you know some vegan values, and you know be conscious of the environment and all that. That's why I picked up this book. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's just a little bit of what I read so far. Yeah. Um on YouTube, we got, uh, there's somebody called Vegan Warrior. Uh, Recipes? Yeah. And food and stuff? Master Peace knows a lot, too. Master Peace is a vegan himself. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he got, um, he got, got a lot of good recipes himself. I mean, when I was working with, you know, I worked with some personal trainers for about a year or so, and I learned a lot about diet and, you know, plyometrics and all that uh but about diet which changed my life completely just by changing the foods that i was eating and you know even just cutting out soda in itself is drastically going to help your health oh, man. it's going to help you and you know if you're struggling with weight that as well that'll definitely help um just cutting that and you know switching over to like whole grain bread you know with whole grain items those two items, that two, those two right there, you'll definitely see a change. Um, 
but I know I was saying something about my trainers, but I, I forget what I was saying. I tend to lose train, train of thought if I uh, don't stay on path. Yeah, you were no, saying about, saying about like, all the diet, like, everything that it was um, teaching you, like what, what the food, becoming a vegan and how to eat, what, what right foods to eat. Uh, meeting you. Uh, <laughs> what was um spinach? I never thought I would eat spinach. Yeah, spinach is good. It's, I think they say the darker the green, the better it is for you. And I'm not, I don't have all the minerals and, you know, vitamins down to a T and which vegetables provide. I don't know all that, but they do say like the darker the green, the better it is for you. And so we try to incorporate spinach a lot and spinach goes right down and we cook it in with mushrooms. Um, but yeah, some by my trainers, but they helped me. They, they changed my aspect on dairy products. They told me a long time ago, and this was like five years ago, I was working with them and they said not to, they said to cut out, you know, limit your dairy milk. Isn't really that good for you or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I've been living close to a dairy free life for many years now, but you know, I do have pictures on my eggs every now and again. <laughs> Jerome, you still eat meat? You you yeah. into yeah. yeah, I still eat meat, man. I'm I'm trying to get back to it. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get back to the vegetarian. Is there particular meat meats that you enjoy that you like more? You know, beef or chicken or whatever? Well <clears throat> like um venison. You know, I, I eat deer every once in a while. You know, um, I've eaten um, alligator before. Yeah. I've eaten um, turtle. I've eaten raccoon. <laughs> Ooh, crazy. Damn, they, man. Nah, but do they taste good? That's what I want. Bro, they taste delicious. Oh <laughs> I agree. Alligator? Do you put that in some sauce? Nah, you see, it was an accident. I didn't even know what it was. My uh, wife came home with it from a neighbor, and um, it was barbecue. So they had barbecue sauce on it. Hold on. Sounds good to me. I can use that right now. Alligator salad. <laughs> Alligator salad <laughs> with some pot sauce on top, nigga. Damn. Good <laughs> that shit was good. I ain't gonna lie, it was good. I wanted another piece, but you know, it was a while back though. And um, yeah, how, how was the raccoon? It was good. It was delicious. Oh my god! Yeah, it was real good. It was better <laughs> it's than real good. Oh man! Like, I don't even. But when I see one now, I'm like, oh man, I ate one of y'all. You know, and I feel the same way with my cows when I watch them on the sla in the slaughterhouse and shit. I feel mm. bad. Now. Yeah, it's like we can we can adjust our eating habits as much as we'd like but those slaughterhouses are still filled and they're building more and you know a couple towns over we're getting a slaughterhouse out in westport they're building one and the town is mad some of the citizens are angry some are happy and it's just a it's a weird feeling because we can cut the meat out but it you know they're still going to be chopping chopping them up whether we're partaking or not you know that's that mass production they got to keep up the numbers and and uh, keep, you know, people will buy it. So they're going to they're going to produce it. They know there's money to be, to be made and they're going to make it. They got us. Yeah. I feel like they kind of have us for lack of a better term. I'm sure there are better terms for it, but kind of have us by the balls when it comes to our food. You know, Yeah, we're pinned in the corner. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's tough. Because, like, I think about it, you know, you go to Dollar Tree and they used to sell little seeds so you can, like, seeds for carrots or whatever. But, like, are even those seeds, have those seeds been tampered with? Or those aren't natural seeds from the earth. They're, it's mass production. It's Dollar Tree. You know, there are thousands of Are there thousands? No, I don't know if there are thousands of Dollar Trees. but Yeah, there are. If, if there is, you're in Massachusetts right now. Um, yeah. I'm in Louisiana. We have a few Dollar Trees. Yeah. They're all over the place. 
so are those seeds are those natural seeds that are coming from the earth or or whatever but no i i feel like those they had to have been tampered with and that's just the i guess the phrase i'm using for i go a step further i say that you know half the meat you know and i, I pose this question to anybody you know how many mcdonald's in one state Crazy. do we have Crazy. You know, how many do we have in one city? You know, yep. now how many states we have? You know what I mean? And how many cities in each state? Oh, yeah. You know, Man. Now, let's look at the Walmarts. And then we got Sam's and we got Taco Bell. And then we got all these other things that serve meat. So the question is, where are they getting all these cows from? Okay. Ain't no way in the world that we have that many chickens. Well, that's why they, they don't they like don't they inject them with something to like can't they? I mean, they they can inject it to make them bigger, you know, with steroids and everything. But as well, they, far as they can't mass produce chickens like they mass produce, you know, burgers at the store. I mean, burgers at McDonald's. They can't mat like create. I mean, really think about it. People eating burgers every day, all day, every day, all day, every day, all day. All day. How many cows, like, like, how many cows do you think are alive? <laughs> you know what I mean? To to supply that demand. You know, you know what I mean? How do we even know that the beef that they're serving at the McDonald's is actually is beef? The cow? Yeah, what if it's probably just a substitute of some sort? It must be. That's what I'm saying. That's the point I'm trying to make. I mean, like, what? Real good though. I I you know I, I'm not gonna lie. I in my day I, I've been known to eat a twenty piece by myself so but it it's you know i try not to eat it that often i mean we're it's not really a normal thing in our house anymore um but in my drinking days it was but that's what i mean like they got they got us by the you know they got a hold on us by the go and, and they're cheap and it tastes good McDonald's. I don't even eat McDonald's burgers. It's been like years since I've eaten them. You know, now I ain't gonna lie, sometimes I get their fries. <laughs> you no, know fries I mean? Yeah, fries are good. Yeah, they're like, fries. All the fries. Like they're all the same size and like they just all look the same. And it just when I go, we got this uh convenience store, Cumberland Farms, and they sell little bananas two for a dollar. It's just a convenience store. But all the bananas look exactly the same. Like the same green and near the stem, really yellow. And then if there's all green ones, they all look the same. And it's, I can't help but think that this is, like I want to say clone. You know what I mean? Like it's just. It's what, if, what, if, what if what they're showing us in the movies as far as the, you know, how like in um, Resident Evil and all these other movies that show cloning facilities and stuff like yeah. that. What if it's not the humans that they're cloning, but the food that they're feeding the humans? You know, see how they they how they had those humans in mass. I'm talking about just mass production, and even in the Matrix, how they had had them in those pods. But those pods were like a whole city and a half. You know what I mean? A whole state, maybe long, mm -hmm. filled with 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 um, these you know, or, or people in 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 these uh incubators to keep them alive to serve their purpose as far as a to be a battery you know or a cog for the wheel you know for the machine you know to, to, to maintain balance in this artificial uh uh um matrix you know and it, it really, like I said, i'm sorry go ahead no go ahead I, i'm just agreeing it, it definitely is artificial that's the, the perfect word for this uh Day and age we're living in. It's very artificial. Yeah, we um no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's so artificial and it's it's sad to see that so many people are like kind of blind like blinded by the world and uh everything that's in everything that's offered to us is like it's it's really like an illusion and it's just so it's so sad to see that people it, it's so hard just for us to go back to nature and just 
be with nature and be one with nature and, and think about natural. It's it's we're so just I don't know. We are so plastic nowadays. I remember when, I remember when George Bush was president and um he was like um you don't want to live by the law of the jungle. You know, he tried to make like make nature seem so glamour don't you know, like like don't we're not going to do that you know we're going to do these laws that you know that govern our corporations you know and th this is what i heard him say you know i don't know what he really said but to me he was saying this is what keeps our corporations in check and you 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 simpletons you you peasants yeah in check you know to, to keep you in line so we're going to do this law. Don't follow him. But the law of nature tells us to love one another and, you know, keep one, one another in mind. I'm coming. Oh, hold on one second. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, we got to get back to nature. Right? I think. Um, Whenever I think of anything, babe, you know that I, all, I always think of can this be made by nature and man? Not like machine mm -hmm. and man, but like like nature and man. Right, like and, the man just uses na natural yeah. products to create something. Yeah. Right, right. I try to think of things like that. So like, oh, what I remember what I was saying about my trainers is they taught me that on the ingredients label of any package, mm -hmm. if you can't understand what the ingredients say, okay. you, most, you most likely shouldn't be you know, mm -hmm. putting it into your body or whatever. Uh, but if you read the ingredients and it's all, you know, things that you can pronounce and read and understand, then, you know, it's probably okay for you. So I, that's something I always, always think about whenever I, you know, purchase anything at the store or whatever. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's good advice for anybody who's trying to eat healthy and like do the right thing as far as like ingesting food. Definitely, because like, People don't know, like you said, people don't know. It's hard for people to not eat meat. It's hard for people to stop eating dairy products and stuff yeah, like it's that. It's hard for people to even blaspheme. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. Oh, you millennials. That's what my dad says. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah um, like, my cousin called me. Well, forget that. She didn't call me. We were at... My auntie's house, I don't know if it was for a Christmas holiday or something, but we were all there and we were around the, um, I think we were in my cousin's room and we we're sitting there on the TV. And um, she's like, dang, cuz, you lost all that weight. How you did it? I'm like, you know, you're not going to do it. She said, no, because I'm really trying to lose weight. You know, you know, I'm, I'm tired of being a plus size. I want to be whatever. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, I'll tell you, but I'm telling you, you're not going to do it. She's like, tell me. So I like, I became a vegetarian. She said, oh, no, I need my meat. You know, <laughs> like she, she had to have it. I said, well, you asked me. And I mean, this is the quickest way. I told her, I said, six to seven weeks, and you're going to be a changed woman. And, you know, these diets that they give us, you know, um, that that take six or seven months, you know what I mean? This is mm -hmm. it's just to keep you paying for that bullshit as you know, uh, uh, um, what they call a routine, you know what I mean? And pay for that product. That's all you're doing, you know. What I did, I just became a I just stopped eating uh, 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 meat and and milk and all this other stuff and cheese and all that. Right. And I was just eating fruits, nuts, grain. Um, vegetables. I made smoothies. You know what I mean. I sun grazed. I, you know, uh, I, I earthed. But, you know, I planted my feet. You know, I did all this stuff. Okay, you know, and um, mm -hmm. it like six, six or seven weeks, not even two months. You know, I was small. People thought I was smoking crack. <laughs> oh my gosh! And you know what? That's always uh, the first thing they say. She on that cracked out diet, but it's true. Yeah. And you know, I. I recently, you know, had had a child, and you know, I was able to. Oops, sorry. I was able to, you know, you know, drop any baby weight or, or whatever through my through my diet. I didn't really have to do much exercising, um, but just, you know, people don't believe me. They say, "Oh, how'd you lose all that weight? You just had a baby." 
and I just say like, oh, I don't really eat meat. You know, I have close to a dairy free and I don't, I really only drink water. So I just kind of try to eat really clean and you'd be surprised at, you know, how much weight you can lose or how, whatever, obviously building muscle is good. I'd like to get back in the gym for real, but diet definitely plays. My trainers taught me diet is like 70% or something. Maybe I shouldn't say the percentage because I'm not sure, but they said diet is a big portion. Yeah. yeah. Me just stop drinking sodas alone. I lost a lot of weight. Exactly. Yep. And Master P, man, um, I want to touch on the um, on the vegan side, man, because we're over here going in on that. <laughs> I know what, what, you're a vegan. First of all, thanks for thanks, thanks for having that. me. And who who was that with you? That's my wife to be, brother. Okay, Queen. Nice to meet you. Yes. Yes. He's a. <laughs> Um, I just real quick just to go and see what was good today, but she ran back. No doubt. Well, uh, I mean, I don't know where you want me to start on the vegan tip. I mean, it's just uh, th there's so many angles to it. So, let you you know, you let me know what, what you want me to talk about. Masterpiece, Masterpiece. I'll introduce you to my wife, Marlena. Marlena, Masterpiece. Hi. Hey, Marlena. Uh, <clears throat> I hope you're having a pleasant night. Thank you. You too. Well, Jane, um, the Bill and I, James, we, um, you know, we're switching up the, you know, the diet and our grocery shopping here in the house. And we're trying to, and to be honest, we haven't done much research on like the ve vegan life or like the proper vegan, um, you know, but we have been able to like eliminate meat for, for the most part. You know, we do indulge, you know, a couple times here and there, but in our normal grocery shopping, there's no meat, but, you know. I don't really know what question I'm going towards. I guess basically we're like new to the vegan world. I don't know if we'd call ourselves vegan, but we're 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 conscious of you know what we purchase and what we give to our children, and um and all that. And we need some recipes for sure, mm -hmm. you know, because we definitely do crave that. Um, I guess it'd be like a heaviness from the meat, like that heaviness that we've been that used to. Feeling, yeah, you know? that full feeling that you can only get so much from beans. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, let me just <clears throat> break it down like this. There, there, there's no right way to start. Um, the, the, the right, the right way to start is by saving a life. Um, you know, oftentimes when you save somebody's life, you're putting your, your, yourself at risk. Um, and, it, it, and, and a lot of people feel that way. You know, they're like, okay, well, if I don't eat the cow, then I'm going to suffer. But um, <clears throat> once you relieve yourself of that negative karma, your whole world opens up in, in ways that it's hard to explain. I mean, I, I've, helped, I've helped definitely by now over 50, 60 people make their way into the transition to, to veganism or at least vegetarianism. I would, say, <clears throat> I would say if one was to try to do the step-by-step -step approach to completely quit the dairy before the flesh, because the dairy affects the mothers of the animals, you know, the mothers and the children. And, and, and that's, that's something that is, that is felt universal. I mean, like when, 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 <clears throat> when religions destroy the mother, we feel it. And then the animals feel it. But there are some uh, religions that keep that alive. Like, you know, in Hinduism, they don't eat the cow. You know, it's sacred. And the cow was traditionally known as a woman. <clears throat> now, the the, the the mucus causing effects of the dairy is like times 10 of that to flesh. In fact, there's a lot of uh, people like say in, in the northern regions who don't really have much access to dairy, but they do have access to flesh like seals and fish. And they're doing all right. Um, then you said and, the dairy yeah. causes mucus, you said? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's something I learned throughout, you know, in my earlier years while I, while I was in high school when I started performing and started singing. And one of the main tips they give you is before performance or even hours before you you are to perform is to not have any dairy product. There are certain things in your diet you shouldn't have because it does create mucus. 
especially if you're you know a singer you need your pipes or you play an instrument and all that that's 100 percent true um and, and and if you take that advice and you stretch it out over the long term and if you know if you say it's not good for to to eat before a performance well then we have to think of ourselves as as performers like all, all all the time we're always performing you know for our families for our friends and the mucus i mean if you're always stuffed up and blowing your nose and 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 uh and got got it in your throat then uh these are these are subtle problems that will manifest into deeper problems later because if the mucus stays in a place for too long in your body it starts to solidify we all know how when we blow our nose it's it's runny but if we leave it in there it'll start to crust up now the mucus that is in our muscles that is collecting in our arteries in our um, intestinal walls in our brain if we let this sit for too long and we don't move it then it will solidify into cysts and and tumors okay the the tumor the cyst it's it's all mucus cataracts in the eyes causing blindness mucus uh uh candida you know it's acidic it's because of the mucus the mucus membrane is is our lymphatic system and it it's supposed to flow through our body freely like a river but everybody knows once you cut a river off and when you have a pond that pond becomes rancid and mosquitoes starts laying their eggs beavers start coming in there and start defecating in there and building their homes and all that so we got to think of our bodies as a, a flow of life and we got to keep the flow open and so dairy is is definitely the the number one thing to quit when you want to rid yourself of the mucus now the flesh <clears throat> the flesh has bacteria in it that cannot be cooked out you, you 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 know there's there's main worms like hookworms and ringworms that you know will die under certain heats but there are larvae and eggs microscopic uh pathogens that are in inside of the muscle fibers and the muscle is blood so you know even if you're saying oh well i cooked it till there's no more blood that's false it it it, it is blood the muscles are blood and so <clears throat> you're really just cooking it up to to a scab and that's why the muscle that's why the meat turns brown like a scab wow okay uh now when you when you eat meat you cannot digest it you do not feel full um, now, okay, there is there is a recognition in your brain that says, I, I'm having too much noxious substances. I'm going to make them feel hungry so they stop eating. That is a defense mechanism. It's called provision and prevision. The prevision takes it in and says, okay, I'm going to use this. Then the provision says, oh, shit, backup plan. This is toxic to us. Get it out of the body. So what does it do? It creates water. You, we become inflamed. When you get a burn on the stove, the first thing that, that fills up is, is water. And people want to pop that sack, but that water is the healing. So uh, we got to keep well hydrated, coconut water. Coconut water has the ability that when it goes through your system, in your stomach, into your intestines and through your body, it is still alive and electrical when it passes through your heart. It's the only substance that that does this that that's known right now, other than highly alkalized water from right. water ionizer, which is very expensive, or yeah. coconut water. Coconut water will still be alive once it passes through your heart ventricles. Now, now, I, is coconut like coconut is like the thing is coconut like what we could survive on if yes you can use coconut water as an iv if you lose blood or if you're in the hospital and they put that iv in you you could actually take a young coconut one of the green ones with no jelly in it you know very fresh water and you can actually put that into your veins and coconut that is, is there's coconut oil like the greatest thing for your skin you can use it in your hair like it's just coconut is like 
Is it like a super food or a super fruit? It's definitely a, a, a super food. It, it, it's, it grows so high that the water has to travel so far up it that it distills itself. It, it distills it so it's the cleanest water on earth. So it is a, it is a super food. Uh, babies can literally, you know, survive off of it. And, um, and, 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 you know, I, I actually, I have, to, I have to, I have to go right now, but I can come back in about 10 minutes. So I'm just going to leave my thing open, let you guys build and I'll be back in 10 minutes. Is that cool? That's awesome. No problem. Okay. Okay. Peace. Peace. I'll be back. Peace. Yeah, man. Master Peace, man. It's always a pleasure to have him on the show, man. He's man. Plethora of gems, you know. Sounds like he knows stuff. Always, always. Man, does sounds. He does. You know, like he. This is what he does. You know, he got his own channel. You know, um, I'm pretty sure everyone viewing this has already subscribed to his channel. But if you're not, oh. uh, because he got some gems. Jaren, man, Jaren was. That's how you, babe. Like Jaren was the one. He's the one who made the song. This is yes. him right here. Very good song. Very. Believe. Very catchy, yeah. Believe is, a, is, a, is I like it. Called. I like it a Reckless. lot. We're gonna be making like flat earth music, like conscious music, and he's gonna be one of the forefront, like leading artists. Or what we want to happen, because like we talk, Bro Sanchez, you was on the pit. He said, you know, we're gonna be making this music together. So you already know. I just, I think it's so sorry to insert myself. But in the conversation, but I feel like it's just so funny that all of you fellas in the conscious community here all do music. I feel like that is a very cool coincidence. I mean, bro, Sanchez, J Jerry in there, and is anybody else? Me, you, <laughs> <laughs> and all the other uh, people. My I'm sure. <laughs> masterpiece does music. Yeah, that's um, great. Danny does music. We all are creative. Uh, Legendary does music. There's a lot of people uh, that do other things too, um, besides music, that can contribute to this too. You know, as far as like the advertisements side, mm -hmm. um, marketing, um, branding, Uber, all that. Uber was talking about how he could do that, the marketing and branding. Mm -hmm. um, uh, David, David was talking about how he can help out with the visuals, with the graphics and the drawing, the logos and stuff. So, yeah, man, this is a lot that we. Get. It's crazy because like all these people that's involved, like they all got all this creative talent. And what we was touching on earlier was how the elite um, they use art and they use they use art to influence the masses for a long time. So think about it like in this ages of when when art itself. Oh, what's up, Danny? When art itself when art itself was uh a thing that was like very popular like if you did a piece you was looked at as a celebrity like the um da vinci's um come on help me out Picasso. Picasso's, yeah. yeah you know they <laughs> were famous I mean. yeah they were famous and they were so they were like the celebrities of today right because of their artistic contribute uh, contribution and they had a lot of hidden messages inside of their um, paintings and yeah. stuff. And it's the same thing as like today with movies and songs. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm going with that is mm -hmm. like, what we do with our music, um, it's kind of like the same thing. We're painting, we're painting the path, we're setting the path for the future of our children. You know, like her, like look at her, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, so she's going to grow up listening to the music, but what music do we want her to listen to? Do we want her to listen to what we grew up on? Or do we want her to listen to music that we make that's positive that, you know, and we're going to be her biggest influence in the first way. And, you know what I mean? So if we, if we understand that by making this music, we're making a better world, we're making a better place to live for her and her future children. That's even makes it even more special, you know yeah. what I mean? And what makes it even more and more special is we got people like Danny, Masterpiece, Jared, um, Bro Sanchez. Um, you've been exposed. You've been, yeah, Dread from you exposed. We got all these people, man, that's willing to, to, to help out and be creative, you know, and, and, and spread that message of truth 
because uh yeah man well i've actually i've gotten to a discussion earlier in the week with somebody talking about you know the next generation of children and whatnot and uh you know i feel like we kind of got lost this past generation i know that my kind of like my uh my younger siblings their generation is uh uh, they're kind of bad, for lack of a better term, some badass kids. Um, but I do feel like our generation now, like James and I, like you know, approaching you know the thirties and all that, that we can we can get it back, you know, and teach our children. You know, I'm a new mother; I can teach my daughter, um, you know, how to be conscious and you know have values like you all. Um, you know, I think we can get that under control. Oh now. yeah, definitely. Hell yeah. Because what well, all I'm just the, saying, you know, my sisters, they're bad. Like all yeah. that, those kids are bad. Yeah. Like, anybody that's like, they walk with their heads down in the phone. They yeah. don't walk with their head up. They don't, right. I don't, I don't make eye contact with that generation. They, they're, they're not trying to hear it. They, they got it all figured out. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got it. But with our kids, you know. Your daughter's form. We got a new one, and we can teach them, and they can know. Right, right. And and our kids can reach what the the people that we can't, you know, the generation that we can't right. touch. Yeah, exactly. that's a great point. That's a good point. Yeah, because I mean, when we if if you teach a child not to care about what anyone thinks. And always go, you know, question everything, and you know, go on your own intuition. Right. You know, they they will never let nobody, you know, sway them any kind of way, you know, and they'll be able to say, hey, well, look, look at it this way. You know what I mean? And and be more persuasive in a good way and not not for bad intentions to get them, get the rest of the people to understand, man, like we've been duped and we need to, you know, get this show on the road before they get theirs and, and theirs isn't pretty. <laughs> Yeah, man, I, I I have to agree with you 10 million percent. You know, we do. We got to get the intro because it, like you said, think about it, our kids. We get our kids to we get our kids to uh, pass this information down to our kids. And then in the next 50 years, man, we can see some real change, man. We can live to see it, too, if we take care of ourselves, you know. Yeah, that's the whole thing, you know, um, taking care of ourselves. I try to, you know, encourage everybody, like, you know, even my wife, I know I get it, get on her nerves sometimes, like, baby, you know, like when my, my friend just died of leukemia and I, you know, I was like, man, look, I think I'm ready to go back vegan, but I was already talking about it before, you know, but I'm like, man, I want you to come with me. I want my children, you know, I, want, I don't want us, none of us to have to go through what he's he, his family is going through and what he went through, you know, mm. cause I'm sure it was a painful process, you know, and, and the thing, the crazy thing is I told him, you know, I said, bro, if you, if you never listened to me before, listen to me now, you know, um, mm. I know, bro, like any process, anything, get rid of it. Anything you, um, if you got a habit, get rid of it. Smoking cigarettes. I know you smoke cigarettes. Stop that shit. You know, I was trying to give him all kind of, and then come to find out his mother-in-law was telling me that, you know, she was trying to do the same thing. So she's asking me, like, do you, have you ever heard of Dr. CB? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I've been heard of Dr. CB. That's, you know, that's the information I got from him is what helped me, you know, get my menu together as far as what I should eat, you know, and shouldn't eat. And um, she said, well, yeah, I was trying to tell him the same thing. You know, but some people just, they're going to do what they want to do anyway, regardless of what we say. But that's what we're coming to the uh, realization that, you know, we should just focus on the people that already have the understanding and the will to want to. Um, right. To want. Focus on the people who are ready for it, because I'm sorry to hear about your friend who, who passed. And I, you know, fortunately, I, I've had a few people in my life who have been able to beat the disease. And mm -hmm. one of my close boys, he beat it. But, you know, after he beat it, you know, he was still growing his hair back. And I I had 
you know, I've been smoking cigarettes for years and, and he, he had smoked too, you know what I mean? But he had just beat his thing. He was feeling good, but he went in my purse and, and took my pack of cigarettes and threw it in the trash. And we got into a big fight. I said, take them out. You know what I mean? I wasn't ready to give up the habit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're not going to receive the information until you're ready. Even if you store it in your mind in the way, way back, and then maybe two years when you are ready, you'll be, oh, shit, I remember. It all it all is clicking now. I mean, but you have to be ready to hear the message. You have you got to be able to come with an open mind, an open heart, understanding, empathy. You just got to be ready. Yeah, man. And one thing I want to touch on it, on the flip side, like, it does suck because, like, my father, he listens to Alex Jones. He eats meat. Yeah. You know, he gets sick very often. Um, and it's just very real possibilities that, you know, any day, like his day, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it just sucks, man. It's just like, it's just, it's just a reality. And like, as much as you want to tell somebody, like, you know, this is what's good for you. They're not going to see it unless they're ready to see it. And that's the thing that sucks about it, bro. You can't just program into their fucking head. Well, you know, you like, you brought up the idea of cutting out meat to multiple people, and they literally have laughed at you. They yeah. wouldn't even let you finish your sentence. You know, oh, people, yeah. it's it's crazy. I couldn't even imagine saying to my dad, Dad, stop drinking milk now. He'd be like, oh, you millennials. <laughs> you know, I just have to wait until my younger siblings are old enough and presented information to them and my dad is stuck in his ways but i think that a lot of people from that time are stuck in their ways you know that 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 era i'm not gonna say like the age and all that because you know i'm yeah, i'm not like scientist or whatever like you know i have education i have some college education but i'm not you know i don't have a degree or anything my grammar may not be a, yeah, you know, but you know what proper. this is the this is the good thing about the build though because this is this isn't about PhDs, nothing but three letters, you know what I mean? Like, we don't care about that here. We care about truth and observation. Observation is everything here on the build for everybody. Um, we got, like, we got, like, so many people here that, you know, um, quote, unquote, aren't qualified, but can tell you truth. And a scientist that is a mainstream scientist, like, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson on fucking Netflix and all that. These niggas will lie to your face. It's hard. Anything and on get Netflix, paid for it. can you really trust? I, mean, I always yeah. question. So there's some entertaining things on there, and I enjoy a couple of the documentaries, but you always question, can can I trust this information? If it's mainstream, can I trust it? Yeah. History Channel, all that. You know, you could trust. You trust, hey, Danny, run, you know, Danny give us some truth, you know? I'd rather listen to Danny all day. No, I'm not bashing you, bro, but I'm just saying I'd rather listen to Danny than Neil deGrasse Tyson. You know what I'm saying? Neil deGrasse Tyson ain't going to do nothing but enslave you or continue your enslavement. You feel me? And you know, it's crazy. the only time I, you know, see, I stopped watching documentaries. You know what I mean? Because like, too, it's too Hollywood for me, but, um, I, the only time I seen Neil deGrasse Tyson is on a Facebook post. That's the only, that's the only time I ever see him. I never mm -hmm. see him. You know, I don't pay attention to him. Like, yeah. I only see him when I have to, like when I'm scrolling. Yeah, <laughs> right. Know? He's a he's a joke, man. Yo, masterpiece. What was you about to touch on? Oh yeah. Well, <clears throat> um, speaking of like mainstream and and Netflix and all that, one popular documentary that's really, I mean, like everybody's everybody's talking about is what the health i'm sure you guys have seen or heard of that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that one i gotta i gotta say <clears throat> out of all the ones that i've seen um on health that is the best one by far because um mainstream because it it basically tells you to go vegan <clears throat> it tells you that the meat and the dairy is is rampant and uh on your body and it's just uh it's just something that you got to give up uh so I, I I recommend showing that to anybody. <clears throat> also for elder folk, there's this great YouTube speech by this like 50, 60 year old woman who said it's never too late to go vegan. You're never too old to go vegan. And that's something that I showed my mom and she really resonated with because, you know, she's elder. 
And um, so that's that's two good ones right there. It's never you're never too old to go vegan. And what the hell? Yo, I got a question, bro. We was touching on something. Um, me and Jaron, right yeah. about GMOs and like about how everybody eating the GMOs. Like, say if somebody was born like 1997, right, and they've been eating GMOs their whole life, and all of a sudden that that turned on to um what's called organic would their bodies reject that because they show used to the gmo and also we was talking about um in relation to how you look like you know like a gmo um a gmo pepper will be like have its color or app whatever anything gmo could like it looks like it's last longer than any organic fruit or vegetable anything that's organic you know, like anything. That's, yeah. You feel me? Like so, like if you ingest, you're always eating organic, right? Could you? Because Jared was saying, like he doesn't look as um, old or younger. Like kind of looks the same since he was, uh, you know, from from years ago. And we was thinking, like, well, maybe because that's like the GMOs, like kind of like preserving the youth, in in in, in a sense, because like you know that that saying, "You are what you eat." Like what? I just want. I want to get your take on that because you wasn't there for that part of the show. Okay, um, I understand it very well. <clears throat> so, this is a thing. We are we are a frequency. Okay, we are one big song. Okay, everybody's body, everybody's the, the way there's quote unquote systems in their body. There's no bodily systems. You know, that's just like uh, countries and nations being separated. You're one whole song, and. Um, that is the, the beauty about, about it is that it is able to change with the times. You know, you have to keep on changing. You have to keep on progressing. Um, will your body reject na natural foods? Never. Because that's like saying, you know, once you quit, quit the meat, your body's going to reject the fruits and vegetables, which it never does. It always accepts life. Life, the, the beautiful thing about this plane is that life always finds a way to thrive. You know, even if you are filling it with, uh, with, with meat and dairy, it will find a way to survive. So <clears throat> I know what you're saying about the GMO with preserving you. The thing is that it'll preserve whatever state you're in. So if you're in a state of negativity or sickness, it'll preserve that for you. Right. The, the thing is, is that um, when you get off of the GMOs, or even if you keep some GMOs in your sit, I mean, it's it, it's it's re it's really difficult in today's day and age to to live without any GMOs um, because it's so they're so subtle, and um, and a lot of places, you know, like we were building on before in the other build, you just you you got to get your potassium because that's very important to have in your your cells environment. You got to have protein. You got to have your your calciums. So. Of course, there's an optimal way to get it, but I would say the stress of, you know, arduously searching for it and, and, and worrying yourself at the grocery store every time will do you more harm than, than, than just, you know, pleasantly going through and saying, okay, well, this is a fruit, this is a vegetable, we're going to eat it. Even if you're eating orange carrots, even if you're eating uh, big bananas, it's still better than meat, dairy, and eggs. So what we were, what we were saying about before with the with the coconut water is that it's an excellent cleanser. In 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 Jamaica they call it a mover because um they understand intrinsically that you're not really ridding yourself of anything unless you completely abandon it. So if you have oxtail and jerk chicken and curry goat you you're accumulating mucus but the coconut water moves that mucus so it doesn't stagnate and, and you know, turn into a, a cancerous tumor or something like that. So what, what, what I would recommend for everybody out there is to go to the, your Asian markets because, um, you know, they got, they got huge um, exports and imports uh, set up wherever they go. You know, they always click up in communities and they, and they make their churches, they make their grocery stores with their mushrooms and their... Fiji apples and, and all the stuff that you can find in the Orient or around the tropics. And that's where I go to get a lot of my Caribbean food. Uh, mangoes, small bananas, papaya, uh, chocho, edos, uh, yam, things like these. And 
and and and and that like we were saying before there's no wrong way to start it um as long as you set your intent on on becoming a vegan then you're gonna naturally want to look up youtube videos and i i i I recommend um one video called the greatest speech you will ever hear by gary yurofsky that's g-a-r-y last name Y U R O V S K I Gary Yurovsky. He's actually uh, like the foremost speaker on on animal rights because that's what it is too, right? It's animal rights. We're you know a lot of people in the conscious community or or elsewhere they talk about slavery and human slave tracking like like uh, in in Libya today. Uh, if if that's even real, you know, it could be a hoax, which I'm I'm leaning towards. But the, the the fact that we cry out against child trafficking, child labor, and and humans trafficking, yet we do the same thing to our animal counterparts, who are way more innocent because they can't speak, they they don't have a voice, they 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 don't know what voting is, they don't know what protesting is, they just are scared straight. And when you eat their meat, you become afraid. When when you when you get afraid, adrenaline pumps through your body. If you were to stay in a state of fear, that adrenaline would actually decay and decompose your muscles. It's it, it's very toxic, adrenaline. There is actually an anti-adrenaline hormone that your 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 brain secretes after the adrenaline to calm you down and to flush your muscles uh, of the adrenaline. Unfortunately, the animals don't get that luxury to calm back down and to realize, hey, it's oh, you know, it was just a dream or whatever. They're, they're constantly living in the fear right up to the slaughter. So the adrenaline is actually staying within their muscles. And when you eat that, that is that contains their fear, the heightened adrenaline, the 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 breaking down uh uh constituents of the adrenaline, that's all going into you. So what 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 would be the best counter measure? Well, that would be sacks of sunlight, which we call fruits. Fruits and berries are the number one things that we should eat. They're the easiest to digest. They have the most water in it. So it is hydrating you. It's hydrating your cells and your cell environment. So things like uh, watermelon, coconut, uh, any melon, Uh, It's great first thing in the morning. Any citrus, grapefruit, lemon, lime, orange, anything like that is great in the morning. And then as your body warms up, you have more warm water and more watery fruits. Now you can get into the more solid fruits like the avocados and the the, the pumpkins and the squashes. And then at nighttime or middle day when when, when the sun's high, you should have... You should have your most solid fruits and then ease back up in the night. You should you should go more watery at the night, you know, soups, uh, sh- drinks, shakes, and things like that. Uh, sour sops, sugar apples, things like that. Uh, the reason is, is because digestion is the hardest function for your body to perform, believe it or not. You can breathe just fine. And if you don't breathe for five minutes, you're dead. You can drink water and that's just fine. That goes right into you. And if you don't drink for seven days, you're dead. But you can go without eating food for a month, 40 days. And actually, you'll you'll actually feel a lot better if, if you were to fast, like water fast. So um, the food is what is killing us, literally. So it's gotta you, you gotta choose the easiest food to break down. That's why when you go to the gym. And you know, you guys were talking about working out. If you go to, if you eat before the gym, now your brain is in a sympathetic mode. Now, now you're in a crave, I want, I'm weak kind of mode. And you can't lift as much when you just ate. So that's why you drink water at the gym. And then right when you get home, you you fill yourself up with the proteins, the beans, the brown rice, the quinoa, the teff, the kamut, um, <laughs> coconut. Things like these, uh, kale stalks, any green leaf, the stalk has all the protein in it. All right. Let's remember, that's good to remember the stalk, any green leaf, the stalk has all the protein in it. That's, yeah. that's deep right there. Yeah, because a lot of people just, you know, destock it. You know, they pull the kale right off of the stalk. They, they throw the stalk away. 
right. um, and and they just deal with the leaves. But what I what I like to do is I I, I peel the I peel the leaf off the stalk and then I chop the stalk up in very fine and then I just add it into my salad so it's like a little crunch. Or I save the stalks up for a juice or for from the blender, and 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 the juicing and the blending will actually open up the cells because the the plant cells walls is it's, it's very tough so it actually opens up the the cellular walls of that making it more bioavailable for you and and people are way too way too uh concerned about protein too much protein in the blood creates nitrogen and that creates gas bubbles and and we all know that bubbles are not good to have in your blood so the protein craze is is another way to keep us animalistic you know eating the meat for the protein well where do you get your protein from well i get my protein from the same places that the ox and the bull get theirs from and the gorilla and the elephant you yes, see you, no. you would never use a carnivore to plow your your field all day because they don't have that long lasting endurance from what a great point That's yeah from, from the, the green the green leafy vegetables give your body the oxygen that is your deodorant okay the more green leaves you you eat the more air the more filled with air your body is and your cells are and the less you stink uh, quite frankly so i mean could you ever imagine a tiger pulling a plow all day maybe it'll take five steps and then just lay down and and, and sleep you know they, carnivores hunt the weak and, and, and the young, because that's the, the only thing that they can catch. They're not catching the long distance runners at the front of the herd. And that's what we got to think of ourselves as. We got to think of ourselves as the grazers, the antelope. All right, eat all day. Just, just munch, munch, munch all day. Don't worry about protein. Get your nuts, get your fats. The fats is the hardest thing to digest. It takes the longest. But it also, but but the reason for that is, is because it carries nutrients through your body. If you imagine like a lifeboat, like a blow up boat, if you're on a lazy river and you're just chilling on the lazy river on your little blow up raft and you're going down the river, if you're a nutrient, then that blow up bubble is the fat and the fat takes the nutrients and it pushes it further into our bodies. So if you're going to have like a like a, a nutritional shake or if you have a big salad, get some fats in there. How can you do that? Um, coconut, avocados, nuts. These things will help deliver the nutrition that you're taking to like tenfold. Wow. Interesting. Very Jones, good. You have a lot of gems, man. I'm telling you. Uh, mm -hmm. What would you say would be the best exercise? Yeah. Uh, that would be uh, that would be um, like <clears throat> what, what is it called? Like uh, you know when you go cross country um, skiing, like you, when, pole walking, like when you when you have the poles and you have the long skis. Okay. That that is a full body arm leg workout. That is, I would say, second best to swimming because yeah. swimming yeah. swimming is the ultimate. Like yes, swimming is ultimate in a saltwater pool, of course, or obviously the ocean or the lake is the best. But chlorine pools, that was created and you know. Now, by the, for the now what's the difference Wait. between a chlorine like the like the pools? Like okay, because the act of swimming, like oh, no, I'm just I'm not I'm not challenging you. I just want you to break this down because this is important. Because you mentioned um, salt water is best, like so. What is the difference or what is the benefit of swimming in a salt water condition opposed to a regular pool condition, like at the YMCA or whatever? Okay. Well, the, the chlor chlorine is toxic. It's highly toxic. Um, they, they, they use chlorine gases on the enemy in, in World War I, um, where, where they actually, and they use hydrogen peroxide for the allies. Okay, hydrogen peroxide is amazing. Uh, it's in breast. It's naturally occurring in breast milk. Hydrogen peroxide uh, occurs as your first line of offense in your body um, when you get an, an infection or or an outside source. Hydrogen peroxide is key. I, I recommend everybody get some. Um, we can go into that later. But the chlorine is highly, highly toxic. I mean, you you can smell it and it's offensive and it burns your eyes. Now the salt, the salt, although it is um devoid of its nutrients because it's you know it's it's bleached out it's not like that pink salt it's not like uh sea salt 
it's it, it's it's very manufactured salt because you know there's sensitive equipment in the pools and stuff like that that it, it needs a s certain amount of saline in it but what it does is it actually you when you get out of a saltwater pool you notice like you you're, you're slick you're slimy it, it it's it's hydrating um now now of course salt takes moisture and you don't want to be into a, in a salt water pool for too long but it is it is definitely like if my baby when she learns how to swim i only want to look for a saltwater pool because it's just simply the fact that the chlorine was used as a weapon and it's very is is very highly uh, toxic to our bodies. You know, I used to go in my community, right? I used to go to this place called Denison Memorial. And we used to um, go to this place. It was like a public pool in a, in a distant town. And we used to go there for field trips every summer. And to think about that, what you're saying right now, and Oh man, it just it sucks. We we was taking little kids to the pool every. Yeah, every yeah, day. it's uh, and and you know look how we turned out. You know we have turned out more conscious, and 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 to to touch briefly about what uh, you were saying about your dad. I'm 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 going through the same thing. My dad is hardcore. You know Jamaican. You know, uh, you know he loves to big up his his Rasta pride. But the thing the thing a lot of thing about Jamaicans is that Rastas are actually full vegan. Actually, they're hardcore vegan. They're uh, they don't eat anything that comes from a package typically. When you go back to Yard or Jamaica, um, and you go to the, to the hills with the Rastas, they're growing all their food. They won't venture down into the into the town much. And and get your prepackaged soy or your your chips, even though they're vegan or whatever. They stay away from all that. They they may use their eggs or their their hens and chickens eggs for their dreadlocks, but they'll never ingest it. <clears throat> um, and uh, and so it, it's tough to see our uh, the the people that reared us not be able to break out of that kind of that habit that addiction because it is an addiction at this point. Mm -hmm. um just just to see how mad they get it's like it's like you telling somebody that you threw their cigarettes away when i was young i used to throw my dad's cigarettes away and he used to want to bust my ass for it but um but we're trying to save them now <clears throat> dr valentine taught me that <clears throat> the stress of trying to save your your mom and dad is is killing you more and it's taking life away from you. There's got to be a certain threshold to, to where you say, you know what? I tried. I told them everything I could. And, and sit comfortable with that. Sit comfortable with the fact that they, they, they took the time to listen and you told them everything you possibly could. If after that it doesn't happen, well, then that's their fate. But the, 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 the job of the parent is to always make sure that their child grows up smarter than them and more advanced than them. So it's only natural for us to feel this way and to be in this predicament. And it's actually a sign that we're growing as a species. Right. You know. Yeah. And you know, what's crazy is when I talked to my father today, he's going to watch this episode and he's probably going to be mad at me, but you know what, whatever. <laughs> Don't say it. I'm going to say it because it's real. We have to talk no. about it. No, no, we have to talk about it. Mark. And he said, you know, he told me, he said, you know what? He said, I I'm very proud of you because you're, you're open, your third eye is open, and you know, that's very good. And you know, he said, Would you? He said, Where you're trying to be, I already know, or well, where I'm already at, what? you know, yeah, that's what he told what? me, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, that was a very it was an egotistical comment. And you know what, I did, did after he, he said that? that, he said, He said, He said, um, He said, Where you're at, he said, Where you're at. I already am where you're trying to be. I'm already am, and I see where you're trying to go. He said, "Don't worry, you'll get there one day." That's what he told me. You know, <laughs> and wow. yeah, and you know what? I love my dad, and you know, I ain't gonna take nothing away. From, I understand, but you know what? He believes in Jesus and shit like that. And mm -hmm. I try to explain to him, like, you know, what I went through was as far as like, you know, tricking your subconscious mind. Um, in order to, you know, alter your reality. And by doing that, you know, telling your subconscious mind to uh, feel, well, not telling, not telling, but like pretty much going through 
um, situations in your mind and feeling what that feels like in order to um, experience that reality when you wake up. Like I try to explain to him my whole experience with that. Do you like, understand? I don't think so, because like, and I, you know, I, I really don't think so. But it's okay, you know. Like I say, I say this all the time. Everybody is in their own. Right, and that's why I, my dad is stuck in his ways too, you know. But I just love him. I love him while he's here. I love him, and I respect him. And I respect his views, and he respects me. And it's all good. That's that, that's the most important thing is keeping the love there. You know what I mean? I mean, recognizing somebody's faults. Like my dad smokes, and and, and he's told me year after year after year he's gonna quit. And I, I I've I've accepted the fact that he just he likes to smoke. And you know what? If that makes him feel less stressed out, and come home a happier person, then you know let him do that. You know what I mean? Because it would yeah it would be great if he got off the cigarettes. Great if he got off the meat and the dairy. But you know. Everybody's life path is their life path. Everybody's experience is their experience. He has another life. He's going to come back again. And with my stewardship, at the end of this life, he's going he's gonna to die more conscious. Now, one thing that I want to say is you, you will never be able to be to your full conscious potential if you're eating meat, dairy, and eggs. And that might sound like crazy because like I don't know what I don't know what Bruce Lee ate. I don't know what Michael Jackson ate. I don't know what you know uh Krishna Murti ate or Malcolm X, you know, but wh whatever their heights were, they would they would be ten times that if they went fully vegan. Because your our nerves and our the way we take in information and the way we feel, if you if you imagine you have wires, which are your nerves, and you dip them in rubber or plastic, you're not going to get that spark. You're not going to be able to transfer that spark. And that's what's happening now with our bodies. The mucus is wrapping around our nerves, and it's making us feel less. It's shutting us off to a higher plane, a higher levels of information. It's shutting off our compassion with one another. But as soon as you clear that out, that mucus out from your nervous system and, and you get it out of your blood, like for me, I've been a vegan for seven years now. So that's one complete cycle um, because we, we, we live in cycles of seven. Um, so you're never older than seven. Every cell renews itself in seven years. Your blood renews itself every four, mo every four months. It looks like flat earth knows that. Um, your lungs renews itself every, I think, like... Uh, like seven months or something, yeah, you, you, your skin is renewing itself constantly every two weeks, you know what I mean? So we are co constantly being refreshed. And when you have gone a cycle without that mucus, yeah, you can, you know, you can mess up and eat an apple pie and you didn't read the direction, uh, the, the ingredients and, oh, you found out there's a little bit of whey in it. Whey is a big thing, W-H-E-Y, stay away from that. That's uh comes from eggs and milk. When, when you have cleared your body out of that and your cellular environment out of that, well, then what happens? The new cells that are being born, um, that you see, right now, our cells are dividing, right? And, and, and they're cloning each other and, and giving birth to new cells. But, every, but when that threshold happens, like every four months for the blood, your blood is coming from a, a completely new source from beyond. Okay, or from within. And that gives your body a chance to be refreshed without that harmful environment. So you're actually creating a new you that quote unquote has never eaten meat. So you, we got to start thinking ourselves as cycles of seven. If you're 28 years old, well then perfect. Next year is a perfect time to start. You know what I mean? If you're, if you're eight years old, well now you got seven years ahead of you to, 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 to correct it. And it'll become easier after every successive cycle. So, so yeah, we, we it just the nervous system and the mucus, it, it, it all plays a role on how we feel and how we treat each other. Yeah, me and my uh, girlfriend are going to do a three-day water fast, 72 hours. And um, we're going to try to build our, I'm going to try to build myself up to do a one-month water fast. Nice. And, um, water feast. It, it takes a lot of water fast 
Yeah, mm -hmm. and it takes a whole, whole lot of willpower. They say the three day is hard. A, f a seven is even harder. A 15 is almost impossible. So a 30 is like, you know, Don't running a marathon. What about, what about I've, I've heard of um, breatharianism. How Bre real is Breatharianism? I mean, hey. Let, yes. I don't know if Sha Shaq, um, I, I don't know if Shaq has read about this, but I, I'm not even into yoga. I've read of people, the, it's called the pranayama. It's a sect of yoga. Shaq didn't, coinc didn't, co didn't agree with what I, when, when I said that, but I see it as like a stem of, of the unity in yoga, you know, and it's the breath of life. There's like multiple different ways of breathing and all these different things. And yes, supposedly there are monks who have lived 20 years only breathing air and drinking water. Yes, um, and the further we degrade the air, the harder it is to, to extract the nutrients, the vital life uh, essence out of that, uh, out of the air. Because we, 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 we take in air through our, our nose. It should be our nose because we get the filtration and then we got the left and right. And then when, when it crosses paths in our, in our nasal ways, that friction is actually titrating and, um, and uh, synthesizing everything that your body needs. So the mouth breathing is very, is very bad to mouth breathe. It's also very bad to lung breathe. You, 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 you I've done this and I know that you guys can do it too. You guys can, rewire your subconscious breath in order to, to draw it to the stomach so you have belly breath. Now, I, I don't breathe with my lungs anymore. I breathe with, with, with my belly all the time. Um, now, with the breatharianism, the nutrients come, nutrients come in through our noses and they, and they feed our brain and our bodies. The, the brain feeds our body. But also, we, we in, in that school of thought with the prana, there's also an entryway for subtle energies to enter through your tailbone and travel up your spine. And that's metaphysical. But um, so I don't want to go too much into that because it's metaphysics and people tend to kind of get out, you know, lose their ear. But uh, to, to, with the breatharianism, that's why they're that's why they're spraying the air. That's why they're polluting. They, they don't care because the more we need food the more animalistic we are and the more dependent we are on the system and they GM all the foods and they have Monsanto. So we need to shop. You know what I mean? We, they want to ruin our soil so that we can't grow our own food. So the, the, the liquid, the liquidarianism is, um, is a step before breath Arianism. Fruitarianism is a step before that. And, and, and the, the lowest thing you could be is a carnivore or omnivore. Now it's very hard to go three days uh, with without food. I, I and I know, but there comes a time where it switches, and, and and it might be different for everybody. But there's a time where it actually becomes easier. You may notice on the fifth day, you'll say, "Well, this is what I notice um, when when I fast is that you have so much time for different things. You 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 will be shocked." how much like eating takes up out of your day. You wake up, you look for something to eat. After you're done eating that, you gotta clean it up, clean the dishes. You know, maybe you're lazy and you're like, oh, I'm so full. And then you gotta think about your next meal. So you maybe go shopping or you maybe put the stove on and, and start defying your, your frozen stuff. You, you will literally save hours in your day from not eating food and you will be so much more productive you won't have that over full feeling. You won't get those cramps. You will have that tummy ache. But remember, that tummy ache is your stomach shrinking back to the size it's supposed to be. Your stomach should not be as bigger than a shot glass. You should not be drinking a huge glass of water because you're, it, it expands your, your stomach and it creates, it, 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 it starts to um, evoke the, the acids to start flowing, which, you know, is, is dangerous for your, for your stomach lining. We are eating too much. So there's going to be a time where, say, the third day, it's so hard. The fourth day, oh, my God, you want to give up. And then the fifth day, you're like, you know what? I'm not even thinking about food. It's, it's 4 p.m. and I haven't even thought about food once. I've done my meeting. I did my homework or, I, you know, I, I met up with this person. 
And then, next, you know, you're going to bed with a nice glass of warm water on a, on a, on an empty stomach, quote unquote, and you're feeling good. So there's a time where it actually starts to get easier. Sorry, Flat Earth, go on. They'll tell us, oh, I don't know about everybody else, but in my schooling, my uh, middle school, they taught us that civilization is based upon food surplus. The fact that we know where our next meal is going to be allows us to be a civilization. Yeah, well, uh, I... Yeah, that maybe that is. And I don't, I don't believe it. You know, and I, the, right. what I believe that goes with propaganda. You know, like that's uh, you saying what you were saying. You know, for instance, like we don't think about that. We don't think about how the time of our day that's used feeding ourselves. Shit, we ain't up but like twelve, thirteen hours, and we sleep what a third of our lives. So how much of it is preparing meals and consuming meals that's unnecessarily? Enough, yeah, dead on point. That's another huge thing is about the sleep. I mean, we get tired and sleep um, way too much. You will notice, A, when you, when you give up the dairy, you're going to have more energy. When you give up the flesh, you'll have even more. When you give up the really processed foods with a lot of salt and the sugar, you're going to have even more energy. And when you fast, woo, you, you, you won't even know what to do. And, and let's not even talk about enemas because I know that the whole you know butt play – in, in, in the black community and in, 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 in any indigenous in any indigenous community you know, that that butt play that's something that you typically want to stay away from but the enemas you know you can go online on amazon get a 15 20 dollar enema bag with the hose um fill it up with nice warm water put a couple drops of uh real lemon oil high grade lemon oil or grapefruit oil whatever or you can just do pure water and you you you, um, you let that whole bag go in you and it might take a, a couple of times you know what i mean but don't stop until you can get a whole bag in your intestines and then hold it in roll around jump around you know suck your stomach in and out really agitate your colon and then watch what comes out you will see things that you, you're gonna see things. You're gonna see some things. <laughs> oh, yeah. But but let me but but let me but let me tell you that that fecal matter that is sitting in your gut. Remember how we talked about the burn with the the, the water? It goes to the the burn when you get a blister. Yes. That is happening constantly because we are constantly inflamed around the belly. You look at the Egyptian um, carvings on the wall, and you don't see tummies. You don't see big bellies. Because these people ate naturally, they were clean, had clean water, and and, and they had enemas. Actually, they used gourds and um and uh, like flax, uh, like 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 uh, flax um and and other types of stems, like you know a marijuana stem, a cannabis stem. And once it's dried out, it'll hollow out. So stems get hollow, and you can actually see uh, depictions on on walls in indigenous ancient cultures of them doing enemas with natural uh tools nowadays we have enemas that are quick and easy to use so we do that and i highly 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 recommend it because after that it's like you just drank a coffee you you, you have so much energy you're buzzing I, I the first time i did an enema i was buzzing i i had this vibration going through my body and i just i didn't know what to do with myself <laughs> so enema you guys that also of the, excuse me Go ahead. Couldn't that have also been a stimulation of the root chakra just through that act? The, 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 I don't like to, um, yes. And I don't like to like separate. I don't like to separate, you know, this system from that system. So it's all one whole thing. I mean, you, you, you brought up the root chakra, but guess what also? Is stimulated and guess what also gets drained when you do an enema your sinuses yeah i was going to say that it's all connected to the lower and see uh so there's the what do they call it the colon the colon is like lower yeah. intestines and yes. all sorts of shit that that part of the body if you get all that removed through cancer and shit you finna die like you'll live but you won't live a life like a normal life that's where all the filtration happens. That's where all the actual absorption of nutrients happens. Yes. That's where everything happens. So it's I'm I'm feeling what you're talking about. I mean, it makes sense to me. I, I think that it's possible to do the same cleansing from above to have it cleanse below, but it's not. You know, I understand what you're saying. It, it, it's it's not, and I'll tell you why. 
when you're when when substances get heated up they they your body naturally starts breaking these things down so if you have like i already talked about the coconut water you how it stays alive even after it passes through your heart but after that it starts to you know break down into its constituent parts when you go straight up the you know the the, the anus and and you you just flush that water with the lemon oil or just the the warm water it, it it's like you're literally hosing it down um, it's like you get getting a power washer and you're cleaning your garage. Now you could say, well, can't I just clean my garage by putting by pouring water on the roof of my house? Well, yeah, you're gonna get some drips on your garage, but th there's no comparison to taking the hose straight to the garage door yourself. And I'll tell you, you can do as many cleanses as you want through the mouth. You know, you could take your um, uh, your, your your psyllium husks with your chia seeds and and your activated charcoal, which is great. Do that, but the enema, that that two way attack from the mouth and from the you know the the butt, that is the the number one. And 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 you'll see it as soon as you take your your you, you pass your bowels after you do the enema my my sister's a testament to that my mom and my dad and my my girl is a testament to that i can buy that i mean I, as i think about it my mom said that back in the old days if you got sick that's one of the first things they did was hit you up with the enema that's that's right and a lot of you know or like a colonoscopy they'll go up they'll check what's happening with the colon because like you said all the absorption of the nutrients happen in the colon so if it's if it's if it's filled with mucoid plaque and that's something that you guys want to look up mucoid plaque m-u-c-o-i-d plaque and you see what comes out it's like a film that encases your colon that doesn't smell it doesn't stink and it's rubbery it doesn't it doesn't break apart like fe feces would it's a sack that you can lift up and hold it's like a rubber it's like the rubber tubing inside of a tire literally and um there's certain protocols um that you could take uh to get that out but the enema enema is by far one of the one of the quickest and most efficient and pain-free ways to do it it's uncomfortable at first but yeah Enemas, baby. Look up enemas, look up cold showers, look up activated charcoal, all these things. This is a classic build, man. I'm going to share this on my page for real. Uh, I'm loving this build right now. We got. We so, got go ahead, bro. Jen, oh, Jen, Jen, I got something to say. Go ahead, brother. So, I was going to ask uh, Master Peace. So, what you're saying is when we were uh, were to if we were to put the enema in us and the way you describe that rubbery plastics like substance for what, for what it sounds like you're saying that is what's going to come out along with other stuff the the protocol to get the mucoid plaque out is it's a pretty rigorous one um if you were to go an enema today you would remove your um your fecal matter that's like chopped up now one thing that you really i'm gonna get i'm gonna get back to it but one thing you want to really look at is your 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 bowel movements your your, your poo <laughs> um you can you can tell how you're doing inside by looking at your poo this is why animals like dogs they smell their poo cats they smell their poo they inspect it they even some of them even taste it they they have no x-rays they have no doctors they are their own doctors so they inspect their own feces so what happens is if you if you 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 want your poo to be like bumpy like it it has to hold the shape of the colon that means that you've got like a, a pretty good bowel movement out if your poo shoots out like slides out of you like a play-doh dispenser and it's straight and smooth like that that means that you're not getting the the colon wall out that means that your colon wall is caked up and your poo is boring through the middle of that and, and you're going to feel run down and tired and you're not going to get the uh, nutrient absorption. Um, another thing is that you want your poo to float because if your, poo, if your poo floats, that means that it still has living plant oxygen still in it. The kale stalks, the kale leaves, the spinach, yada, yada, yada. And it's making it float. If your poo sinks to the, to the bottom of the toilet, it's bad news. 
Also, you want it to hold an S shape. Uh, you want it to, you want to see that curve of your colon. You want it to be nice and firm. That means it's not leaving much behind. Now, once you start having good um, defic defications, good good bowel movements, then and 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 you're doing the, implementing the enemas. There's a, a very specific mucoid plaque protocol that is it's pretty new to the market because the technology is new the um, a lot of time we use psyllium husks or like chia seeds and 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 uh activated charcoal to 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 cleanse the side of our bowel walls the colon but there's this new um i guess you'd say technology where they use palm tree fibers okay now the palm tree fibers it's a little bit bigger and it's a little bit harder for you to digest so they get um probiotics to pre-digest it enzymes to pre-digest the the palm tree fiber now it's 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 pretty expensive not not me because i'm in canada but not as expensive for you guys in, in america um and i can i can i can give you all the name of it um uh, soon, uh, a bit later on. I'm sorry. I'm just not. I I don't have access to it right now. But um, if you if you type in mu remove mucoid plaque into YouTube, then you will see that the the product that they're talking about. So when you're doing the enemas to to first give yourself like a pre cleanse, and then you do this protocol where you take it through the mouth and it goes through you, and then enema on top of that, you're going to get something comes out of you that kind of looks like a rope and my um my sister my sister did it because she's she's struggling with weight and i'm i'm juicing for her nightly and i'm going to zumba classes with her you know i'm trying to keep her motivated you know what i mean she's got a wedding coming up and the what this product did for her this colon cleanse was serious i mean she would i mean i hate to sound disgusting but i care right so she would send me pictures of her feces at work, like Corey, look what just came out of me. And I'd be like, damn, good, good job. You know what I mean? Cause she's battling with it. She cries about it. You know what I mean? So you know, I'm a man and I can handle that. So yeah, the enema plus that, that colon cleanse is, is something that we got to get on. We got to get on it. Okay. Yeah. Because my, um, <clears throat> what you're describing, you know, um, my stool, if you will, Sometimes it floats. Sometimes it's like smooth. You know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, I know I have a pinch nerve, a sciatic nerve, you know, um, from driving. Um, and uh, I went to the hospital. It's, it's a troll, by the way. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all noticed it's called Dread Been Exposed. Yeah, that that. Yeah, I seen that dude. He was just hanging out for a while. Sorry to cut you guys off. No, that's all good. Uh, go on uh, with, your poo, with, with the, the the poo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and I've been having pressure in that area, you know, constantly, you know. But it's not it's not a pain. It's just aggravating, you know what I mean. So I went to the hospital to see what it was, and they, they said probably due to my sciatic nerve but i'm like but my poop is coming out a certain way you know sometimes it's bumpy but sometimes it's like it looks you know you know what i mean you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> yeah yeah definitely it'll, it'll range i mean sometimes you don't even know what you did you know sometimes you'll have a a cocktail with uh like some concentrated papaya juice or sometimes you'll just have a random salad or eat an apple and that'll be enough to to get your poo to flow or to hold a good shape and, and this firmness, you know what I mean? Um, but if you, if you monitor it, if you, if you watch it and you take conscious steps, okay, it's like, shoot, it didn't float. I got to have more salads this week. Oh man, I didn't get the, the sides of the walls off. Maybe I got to have more citrus fruits because citrus, you know what happens when you put lemon oil on grease, it just completely dispels it. So if we get that lemon, uh, that lemon peel oil with a nice big glass of water, warm water, and you drink that, then you're, you're going to be doing more for your body than, you know, than a doctor ever could. Cause that, 
that um, when it's diluted in the water, then the oil particles get to spread out and go to your arms and your arteries and your legs and your inner thighs and your colon and, and just work wonders, y'all. I'm telling you, the, the first thing when you wake up should be warm water and citrus. The, when you go to bed, try to drink some more citrus and warm water. It, it, you guys will love the results. Lemon and water, I've been doing it for years, and I agree. That's it, 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 it changes you. Same with dropping the meat. I, I haven't been able to drop the dairy, man. I drink a lot of coffee, and that's the only thing I put in my coffee is milk. And, um, man, almond milk well, don't work. I don't, I don't uh, try it at all, but I can't, get, <laughs> I can't get through. I can't get away from the bitch ass dairy and its opiate fucking uh, little yeah. compounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tough. Well, like we said, you know, it's it is an addiction and chocolate milk is 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 even worse. I saw a girl drinking chocolate milk today and I said, "Don't doesn't she know that's just expired milk that's flavored?" Did you know that over 50% of Americans of uh, Americans think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows? What? That's true. Yeah, oh, kids, ask the children in school. That's that common for real. Yeah. It's it's disgusting. It's, it's disgusting how much little knowledge that we have. So, you know, a few people that we can check out is, you know, Dr. Laila Africa. He's he's really he's really racist, you know what I mean? And he but but he's got a lot to, to share when it comes to food combining. You know, he will tell you not to combine a melon with anything else. A melon is all you need. You don't need to eat a melon with with something else. Um, Ooh, I got a melon story real quick while you're on this real quick. Can I tell a little, uh, little yeah. slave story uh, uh, my, that has been passed down in my family? All right, so uh, as I've already said, my family worked plantations just like everybody else's family from the South. Um, they, they said in my family that they used to give what's called juba on Sunday. All, all week they would save the the slave master would slave save their scraps into a cauldron all week and it would sit outside they would pull that cauldron in on sunday add water to it and make the slaves eat it with the master so that he would you know feel like he was letting them eat with him at his table well the the kids and everybody if you don't clean yourself after eating rotten food like that you get sick so they would de they would devour over consume watermelon. They would flood their body. It's a diuretic, and it's got com it's complete. It it's one of the things that's complete. Watermelon, most melons, like you were saying, coconut. These are things you can live on. Yes, like you can survive on these things, and it also flushes the body. Watermelon is a better diuretic than cranberry juice. It just isn't spoke of like that. Yeah, yeah, especially when you chew up those black seeds. Uh, those black seeds are very um, electric and they're they're sharp, so they're a good scraper and scrubber for your colon. Um, the 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 rind you can wash the rind really well. The green part that everybody tells you to throw away, you can shred that into your salads. You can juice it. You can put it into your drinks. Uh, your blended exactly what I do. I juice it. We make watermelon water. I juice the entire watermelon and add water to that distilled water. Amazing, and you know. You know, the, it, that, that is one of the biggest tricks that they've played on as mental tricks is that they, they say, you know, all oh, black people, all y'all eat is watermelon. And it gets us self-conscious self to eat the watermelon when really you could live off the watermelon. Um, now, the juba, the thing about the juba is that because it was fermented, it would feed their body with, with probiotics. That, yeah, that phytonutrients and things like that. Yeah, I feel you, but yeah, I yeah. don't think this was a controlled rot. This was a very uncontrolled rot. Oh, okay. Well, well, I guess I guess they've perfected it now and made it into like a, you know something that is delicious and and you know uh, consumable. Because anytime you is this something that's still I never I I just thought of this as a story in my family. Hold on, hold on. This is a real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. That, that, like ju juba is, it's like it's fermented down, like food, so that you can it it gives your body a lot of a lot of good iron because uh, the enzymes are breaking it apart, and it also um, 
the, uh, the 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 probiotics that are in it like you know you 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 eat your yogurts and and stuff like that that's like another form of that it's like a it it it's like a beer a brew a mead because it has those fizzies in it when it has those fizzies in it that means those probiotics are in there eating and farting and creating those those bubbles for you so yeah you could get drunk off of it definitely and 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 to, as a good hangover remedy or as a good moving remedy to get that out of you of course it's the watermelon because it's highly electrical um it's got a lot of flavonoids in it a lot of pig, good pigment and um the black seeds the white seeds are whatever but the black seeds are are great if you want to if you want to save the as many black seeds as you can and and soak them um overnight then even better but uh, yeah, if you think about it, if you go to the store, how hard is it to find a watermelon that got the oh seeds? My in? God, dude, it's 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 very tough. I I go to that Asian market and I see seedless a bunch of the times, but like once every year for an extended season, I will say I will see seeded watermelons, and at those times, that's when I give it to my baby all day and all night. I mean, it's like watermelon for breakfast, watermelon for lunch, and dinner. How it's do you feel shit. about? Um, What's that, Jay? How do you feel about black cumin seed oil? I, I I've taken that, and I've had a um when I went for a job, I had to take a um, physical, and they said that I had a bunion on my toe, and I couldn't get rid of it, but I can treat it. So I'm like, you a damn lie. I didn't listen to them, and I researched and came across black cumin seed oil, and I purchased it through Amazon. I received it. I started taking it. Three days later, um, I still felt like some pressure, but it wasn't it wasn't pain, you know. And then after that, the pain totally subsided. Now I have no problem with my foot at all. So yeah, and and, and, and I, I want you to keep on taking it, even though the problem is gone. Keep on taking it, maybe once or twice a month, just to have it in your body. A lot of times we don't realize that the constituents of the food we eat stay in us for, for months. So um, I don't have a problem with that. Typically um, oils like that, they don't have like um, a cold pressed version or it's just done how it's done. But obviously if you could find a cold pressed. Nah, it's cold pressed. It was cold pressed. There you go. That you, you, you found a jackpot. You found a, I, I, I very black, same with black walnut powder. If we're talking about black stuff, Black walnut powder will will do wonders topically and and in in just and, and in castor oil too. You know this earth provides us with the medicine. That is why we have to get off of the meat. We have to get off the meat and dairy because we. If how can you feed something that is living, which is your body, with something that is dead? You know when you when you take a watermelon or a lemon, it's not dead. If you put it on a a Carillion micro a a Carillion photo, photo uh, camera, then you will see huge electrical sparks coming off of the the lemon and the the kale. But if you put a piece of flesh under this type of uh, photography that can you know photograph the auras, then you will just see like a a dim glow. It, not much going on. So the, the the seeds in the lemon are still alive. The oils in the lemon, the enzymes are still spinning and rotating very fast. So you cannot give your body life with something that has actually died. Now, you wouldn't eat a salad that had all the spinach and the kale all mushy and soggy and black and furry and stuff. No, because it's dead. It's dead. So why would we eat... A, a rotting corpse that is only going to further rot in the, in our stomachs, and then when you when you when you pass the gas, oh my God, it smells like a cemetery. Look, um, see, and that that goes perfect with what I was saying, it, and it changes your physical, like it, it changes you. I haven't eaten meat in like a year and a half, and uh, man, I'm telling y'all, it changes you. Uh, the black seed oil, the black walnut oil. I want to say my father told me years ago that that's for prostate and all sorts of other things. It fixes it, fixes imbalances in the body. Um, I have the, well, the only reason I even spoke right now, I'm glad it came back to me while I was rambling right then. Um, 
my father got an old book. It's an herb book, and it's a reprint of an old, old herb book. And it goes off the Pythag, uh, what was his name, Hippocratic Oath type thing. And uh, it's got it tells you how to identify herbs and identify things. It tells what they do. The first line of that book says, "Food should be your medicine, or food shall be your medicine." And it was an excerpt from some sort of old proverb or some yeah. shit. Let but food, by, food, let food be thy be medicine, the medicine. Medicine be thy food. And that makes perfect sense, and that's what we ain't doing in life. And and that's what it, it's so easy to go to and get ninety nine cents worth of garbage. But you go try to get ninety nine cents worth of real food and see how far you get. Yeah, and and, and you know what? It's funny. Is it? It's so rudimentary. It's so simple to 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 eat vegan that it's hard. It's complicated. People are like, "Well, where do you start? Exactly. What, what do you do? What, what you just you don't eat anything that comes from an animal. That's all you do. I don't care how you cook it up. Put your tomato sauce with your beans and put a little curry in it. I don't care. Just don't eat." animal products and it and can't you, come from a box that's the biggest thing also you know like everything at our stores is in a box it's processed yeah. process anything every process that something goes through is more of that light you were speaking of earlier getting taken from it it's yeah. no longer got that light in it it the tr fresh from the tree is the closest you're gonna get to sacks of light like you said even you know, if it sits in the store for a minute, it's still got that light in it, but nowhere near as if you pluck it from that tree and ate it. That, that That's correct. I, I even had a joke with my friend. Imagine we just, you know, we didn't even take it off of the tree. Imagine we just like pulled the branch down and ate the apple with it still attached to the tree. <laughs> Which is what they show the little fictitious dinosaurs doing and shit, really, when you think about it. I mean, that's and right. that's what the animals do. All the animals you see in fantasy movies, you see them doing that type shit, too. Yeah, that's right. And it's amazing. I mean, and, and no wonder why they never sleep. I mean, birds are up at 4 a.m. You know, the dogs are up. Everybody, all the animals, they eat what they're supposed to eat. And they have no need to really sleep deep and not want to get up for the cold ass morning. You know what I mean? Um, but my daughter has never eaten something from a box or a can or a package. Everything that I make her, every time that I make her, it. I'm cutting it up fresh. I'm, you know what I mean? Everything is, everything is fresh and it's possible. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of work, but it's, it's possible. And if you, you know, if you really care that, that much, you'll go that extra mile. Um, you know, so yeah, I, I, I it's getting late. I got to, uh, I got to sign off. I want to spend some time with my, with my family, but, um, this has been a really great build flat earth, flat earth. What, what's your full name? Flat earth. What? Oh, it's Flat Earth Unity, but I've been on before. Y'all don't see me. My name is Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's it gets cut off on this thing. So you know, Flat Earth Unity, Josh, man, you got a wealth of information. I would love to build with you more in the future, uh, Jerrion. You're you're you ask great questions. You know what I mean? Because you can tell you can tell somebody's intelligence off the questions that they ask. So, um, you know, great questions. And I don't know if the build is still there, but um, I'm I'm gonna sign off. And I'm going to share this video tomorrow on my page. And uh, I just want to say much respect to the build for having me through. And uh, Flat Earth Unity and Jerrion, thanks so much for uh, building with me. Yes, sir. Thank you for having us. No doubt. No doubt. All right, y'all. So try to holler at the build and try to get the show back going. All right, y'all? <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely. All right, y'all. Peace, flat power to all y'all. Flat power, man. Peace. Yeah. So the... He speaks truth with the enemas, I believe, because like I said, my mom and them and a lot of old when you hear about old remedies, a lot of it got to do with putting, uh, like you were saying, charcoal, all sorts of things in enema bags and putting it in a baby's ass or putting it in your own ass or putting it in whoever's ass. Like, it's silly to talk about putting shit up somebody booty, but if it, if it heals us, you know, nothing should be taboo if it, it's going to do some benefit. Yeah, it's only taboo because of, you know, our modern times, you know what I mean? They the way people look at things, you know, they they perverted things so much. They perverted the breast, they perverted the, you know, the the birthing canal. They've perverted everything, you know, to where every time you think of something, you know, um, you gotta say, uh, what it is, no homo type shit. You know, you gotta say shit like that just to clarify that you not um you know, some some type of way, you know what I mean? But um, 
I see it, man. This is this is crazy, bro. This is this shit is you, know, I mean, it's you speak truth because it's exactly what it is. It's just taboo because we heard someone before us, someone we looked up to, be like, "No," I mean that that's true. Straight up, man. I, I just don't. Uh, I don't conform, and a lot of people they don't. A lot of people when they see that, they, they that looks kooky. <laughs> like shit, I can't do what y'all doing. I always did. Whenever I seen somebody going one way and doing something stupid, I'm like, oh, you know what? Hello? Yeah, you there, bro? Okay, I think uh, flat Earth Unity fell off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I was just saying when I when I see some somebody doing something stupid, I just walk the other way. Like you know what, I'm gonna see y'all later. You know, I love y'all. Y'all can do what y'all got to do, but you know, I'm gonna do me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, a lot of people looked at that as a. Uh, Cowardice. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? I'm not stupid. Just cause, okay, because I'm not. Because y'all jumping off a bridge, I gotta jump too, right? Like, nah. Mm. You know, I didn't. I didn't conform to that shit. You know. So, but masterpiece was, you know, dead on with that. Uh, with the enema. <laughs> Sound like I need to give me an enema. <laughs> shit. Looks like they all dropped out of the car. Say it again. <laughs> so it looks like they all jumped out. Of <laughs> he fell asleep, yeah. and I was in the room with the baby. So we. That's all good, you know. I've been on the build all day, so you know I'm. Uh, I'm actually right now um, fixing uh, the children food and shit. You know, I'm about to go lay down and watch watch a movie, get some insight, talk to my wife, whatever. You know what I mean. Watch a lecture. I don't know. Do something. I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> you know? I heard somebody try to do some stuff. Some of tomorrow, because I'm off tomorrow, too. <laughs> Say it again? <laughs> so I'll probably get it in tomorrow, because I'm off tomorrow, too. <laughs> so we're lying in the fall. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. You know. All right, brother. Yeah. yeah, it was a good... It was a good... It was a good day, man. I, I really... I can say this is the first day outside of spending time with my family that I've enjoyed in a long, long time. You know, so right. I hope you guys have a, a wonderful evening. You know, kiss that baby for me. You know, and I'm uh head on in. <laughs> okay, man. Much love. All right, man. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah.